Um, this material, again, focuses on the issue of getting bang for our buck when it comes to testing. Putting, because we have limited time, limited testing resources, we put our efforts into testing strategies that are most likely to yield returns, gains. Put some money, get the door back to uh, And uh, we've talked about several strategies for doing this, focusing on things like equivalence class testing and boundary value testing. Um, there's other principles too, you know, testing risky areas of the code base or areas that have been modified in major ways, areas of the code base that have not undergone peer reviews or where peer reviews have spotted problems. But today we're going to be talking about an additional technique that's really quite useful. And it's going to introduce um, some testing guidelines related to coverage. Um, it's also going to be introducing some concepts like the notion of subsumption of one type of testing by one type of testing of another, which has to do with how strong are these types of testing. There's a formal hierarchy of testing levels. So if you test it at level A, it may be stronger than testing at level B. For example, edge-based testing. If we draw out a graph of your system screens and paths between them, testing all paths or that, or excuse me, testing all edges within that, reaching all edges is as strong or stronger than testing all that you have reached each screen. And testing what are called prime paths is stronger than that yet. And I'm, I'm going to be introducing this notion of subsumption, which says that one sort of testing is at least as strong as another. It subsumes it. If you if you test at level A, you test everything level B does, and often more. Um, that's going to be a key concept for today. So we're going to be talking here about coverage. And all of you at a certain level should be broadly familiar with some notion of coverage, because I've talked about the concept in a more informal way, code coverage tools. But often that designation kind of belies the fact that the notion of code coverage present in common tools um, is, is a, a weak form of coverage. It has to do with reaching particular states or nodes or, or points in the program rather than some of these stronger levels. So we're going to be talking more formally about levels of coverage of your program. We're going to be talking, oh, why isn't, okay, so why isn't this presenting? It's showing it on being on HDMI. I should have tested it. Okay, it's like the monitor isn't on despite saying it is. What's going on here? Um, okay, this is not good. Um, those online are seeing it evidently. The monitor shows on the LED light turning on that it's on. Is it? Ah, okay. Okay. Um, this this looks uh, like progress, but in a rather muted form of progress. Let's let's go back here. Um, okay, so let me let me end up frobbing this. Okay, okay, we're gonna be debugging this. Okay, when you're debugging, you develop hypotheses. I um, I articulate a hypothesis. One hypothesis is. My computer is simply treating this as a uh, extension of the screen that it's not putting things out. So I came over here and I kind of dragged windows over to that area to see if it's just on a different area of the screen. I don't see evidence of that. So that hypothesis is no longer my working hypothesis. My working hypothesis is earlier was the, that the projector wasn't on at all. Now I see it is. Um, that may have changed. Um, so I have a, another hypothesis is, is something to do with this 
HTML, uh, HTMI line. Um, so I'm switching it over PC. Aha, okay, so I've done a controlled experiment. I had it on HDMI. Now I've switched it over to the PC. I see it dis does display. So it's something to do with the either the configuration or <laughs> or the buttons aren't quite working. And guess what? The buttons don't quite work. We live in an analog world. Um, EEs will tell you that. Um, okay. Uh, now we're back uh, back in business. So many cases of coverage. Um, we're going to be talking about coverage at different levels. State-based coverage, transition or edge coverage. And if we're lucky, we'll start to reach prime paths coverage. But given we only have one lecture here, and given that I allocated some time to group meetings up front, we probably won't get uh, materially through this. But I'll introduce the notion, perhaps. Um, and what I'm going to be talking about is levels of coverage, state-based transition, prime path, that can be applied either with black box testing. What do I mean by black box testing? Can someone say? Yes, Jeffrey. You cannot see the code. You can't see the code. You know nothing. You don't know anything about how the code works. You're testing it through its interface. It could be through your user interface. It could be through the interface to a class, you don't see the code for the class, but you know the methods it supports and you call them. Or you may be calling off to a function, you don't see the code inside the function, all you know is preconditions, postconditions, and perhaps the uh, what it takes is, and, and what it takes is arguments and returns. So that's black box coverage. You're testing kind of, does the this construct meet its requirements? Um, or meet its design goals. Uh, class box, by contrast, is looking at the code. And, and there we're asking, is it, is it, um, is it something where uh, the code is working properly uh, given that we can see it? Um, confirming that the implementation matches the design. Uh, so we, we can do testing at these different levels, at the level of kind of an interface or at the level of, uh, of, of the, the code. So we're gonna be talking here about abstract models of, of a system. We're gonna be talking about representations of a system. And you folks may know that in my deliverables I look to for you, I, I asked for flow diagrams for your system and I think I think all teams have now presented me with one. Uh, maybe not every single team, but if you haven't, it's a good thing to provide for ID5. This is an example of a flow diagram. Anyone recognize what's this for? If you look at it, what do you think it's for? Action uh, Okay, yes, it is an action diagram. And uh, I'll go with Jesse in the back there. Um, this kind of shows like the immediate start point and end point for like interactions with the system That's right. That's right. And for what sort of system is this, Matthew? An ATM. It's an ATM. Yeah, it's how I made a teller machine. Um, so this is for the type of machine you might you might go to for getting cash, right? I know that may not be very common for many of you, but um, it was a, a familiar prominent feature of, of life for many decades now. Um, and here we have different states of the system and we have transitions between these states, right? Um, for example, here we insert our ATM card. If it's not recognized, we transition as a state where this card has been ejected or if it's recognized, it prompts us for a pin and it waits for our pin. And then we're in a state where we're entering the pin, we're in the midst of entering it and then it, Either it confiscates the card because it's expired, or if it's not expired and the card is deemed lost, it may confiscate it. You know, it's been reported to be missing. Or if it's not locked, it will check lost, it will check the pin. And then it can loop back here if it's invalid or otherwise prompt for a transaction, like withdrawing money or something like that. Right? These are states and transitions. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this was from last year, a system flow diagram for a website for showing health-related data for people with uh, long COVID. Um, and a student team built this system flow diagram, which marked your flow through the user interface for system, including error conditions, you know, they log in and figure out is, is this person with valid account? Do they have updated credentials? You know, up-to-date credentials, are they an administrator, et cetera, and displaying different things based on that. Or you might you might have one of these for like buying tickets for airlines. This is a little bit dated now, but you know, you're in a state of having made the reservation or paying the reservation. You might do those at somewhat separate times. You, you've made it, you've kind of locked it down and you have a certain amount of time to pay it. And then um, you're, you're fully ticketed uh, by that. Um, and again, it's a bit dated, but we might have uh, different levels of coverage within here. We have the states again, we have transitions, and then we can have different levels of coverage. We can have state coverage where we reach each of these states, um, made, paid, ticketed, used, uh, canceled by customer, canceled through non-payment, or we can have transition coverage where we cover each of these transitions. What I'm trying to communicate in these couple slides is these type of diagrams can be created for many types of systems. And in fact, we can create these at the statement level for code. We can create graphs of these and we'll be, we'll be seeing them, but it, they look something like this. Mm -hmm. You can take code and you can graph out a flow graph. Have you have you folks seen these in class? Flow graphs for code? A little bit? Okay, okay. I, I, I hear hopeful sounds. Um, so there's many types of systems we can illustrate these for. Some, we can draw them out based on the user interface, the graphical user interface. Sometimes it's a matter of the processes in place, the kind of logic of how we run our, you know, our retail operation here for repair of devices, et cetera. Um, but it can also be at the, the uh, statement level. So glass box, you look at statements, as Jeffrey said, you look at the code. Or black box, you're just looking at the user interface. Do you get that idea? We can apply these techniques, code coverage, at the state at the uh, state level or at the transition level, prime path level, and beyond for either glass box at the level of the detail code or black box at the level of the overall system flow through a graphical user interface, for example. Do you get that point? Okay, so these techniques for coverage testing will be appropriate there. Now, you're, you're responsible for this, the contents of the slide. So I, I wanna spend a bit of time on it. We're gonna see probably three types of coverage approaches in this lecture. My final two. The first, um, so whether it's state-based testing, transition testing or prime path testing, they all follow a common pattern. And the pattern is described here. It's a lot of text here, so I want you to, to follow through it. It's gonna be three steps. And I have been known to ask you, dear students, about what those three steps are. Because they're useful to keep in mind when you're doing coverage testing of whatever sort. And it's easy for students to get confused about them once they start thinking about testing states versus testing transition versus testing paths. You start to get confused sometimes about, about the, the stages of it. And if you come back to this guideline, you'll have a clear set of steps, whatever the type of code. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to figure out the set of things we need to cover. For states, it's gonna be the set of states. For transitions, it's gonna be the set of, guess what? 
transitions. For paths, it's going to be the set of, anyone want to fill it in? Paths, yeah. Don't get confused that like a path has many states. Yeah, fine. Uh, it, we want to, if we want to cover paths, take fine paths, those are the set of things we're trying to cover, fine paths. If we're trying to cover transitions within one of those diagrams, we're going to need to list out all the transitions and figure ways to cover them. That themselves will be passed through the system, but don't get confused about it. So we want to identify a set of things we want to cover. Okay. And then we're going to identify paths through the system from start to finish that will cover those things. So maybe we want to cover transitions. We're going to find paths through the system from start to finish that will cover, collectively cover all those transitions. So we, we have a set of transitions we want to cover, and we're going to figure out different paths, okay, this way and around that loop once, um, and then continued on, or this other way, et cetera, that are going to co collectively, together, they're going to cover all those transitions. And then we're going to develop concrete test cases, specific sets of inputs that cover all these paths. So first, figure out the things you want to cover. Number two, figure out abstract paths, not yet getting to the concrete test level that will go through and cover those things. And thirdly, specific test cases that will exercise all those paths. Okay? We're going to be going over some examples of this, but I just want you to come back to them. Those are the three basic steps. Figure out what you want to cover, figure some paths that will cover it, and then figure out how to exercise those paths with specific test cases, particular inputs that will exercise them, that will realize the paths, make it go in those paths. Okay. Okay, so um, when we have this sort of testing, we're going to derive legal paths from the program from start to finish that will hit the set of all things you want to hit. Maybe it's states, maybe it's transitions, maybe it's front path. And then we're going to find these specific test cases that are going to exercise the path. So we'll make it go those directions. So let's, let's look at some example. So here's some code. This code is, is CGI decoding. So it's going to take a, a CGI encoded string. So that's with things like plus or percent sign for hexadecimal values, uh, plus for blanks. Uh, and it's going to take that string that's already encoded with that. So it's like percent 20 and, you know, plus, uh, you know, um, CMPT plus 371 plus um, is plus over exclamation point. Um, and, uh, and it's going to turn it into CMPT 371 is over with spaces between those. Does that make sense? This is a CGI decode. It takes in a CGI encoded string with percent signs and pluses and turns it into a regular string that when it's CGI encoded, gives that input. Okay, um, that's the idea. Now, we're going to here and elsewhere that one of the big tricks is we're gonna take what we wanna test and we're gonna turn it in to a flow graph. That's what mm -hmm. I asked for for your projects, right? Remember I said, give me a flow path, a flow graph of your things. Remember it's like screens of your application. Maybe you're on the projectile point one and it's web pages in your system and you have paths between them, right? Maybe it's the project with signing up for veterinary science stuff and you go to, you know, there's a, uh, there's a, um, you're first going to sign up for it maybe and you, you, uh, and go through certain screens. And then maybe separately when you get a survey 
you can go through a couple steps and you know um, undertake different tasks, discarding what you filled out or 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 filling it out and submitting it or what have you. Um, with the Oculus, there may be different states where you're like selecting the axes to show, or you're you're going and you're switching it to PCA mode or something like that, right? Um, and you're you're selecting points or what have you. So we're going to be building flow graphs. So we turn code like this, for example, into a graph like this. When I asked just a few minutes ago, have people seen this before? There seemed to be some people who had seen this before. This idea that you could turn code. What language is this code in? C. Yeah, it's good. And we could represent it like this. Each of these blocks is what's called a basic block. Anyone here take compiler? Okay. So in compilers, um, actually one of the concepts that comes up when you're doing the back end of compiler emitting code, or even kind of the the, the middle uh, of a compiler, you're working with intermediate representations, you may be working sometimes with basic blocks. These are sets of code where if you reach it, it's gonna execute all the way through it. In other words, they're kind of units of execution. So if you reach this point, it's guaranteed you'll reach this point. If you reach, you know, the beginning of this block C, you'll you'll uh, you'll execute all the way through. So these are blocks in a flow graph, and these transitions in the flow graph represent different ways you can go in what's called control flow. So look, if you come in, here's this while loop, right? You have a bit of a header here. You execute those three lines. That's one basic block. You come in here and you say, while my pointer points to something that's non-null, I'm going to loop. Um, first of all, I'm going to check if I'm pointed to a plus. If I'm pointed to a plus, I'm going to have an output character corresponding to that that's, that's a space. If I don't have a plus, then I check if it's a dollar uh, percent sign. And if it's a percent sign, guess what this is? Anyone know? With CGI encoding, what's a percent sign? What does that mean? Sorry? It's start of a special character, and it particularly encodes it in hex. And so here it will percent to always is what? Yes, yes, it's space. What does it correspond to in hex? What is two zero? Please tell me. Have you forgotten your hex, dear student? Hexadecimal, what is two zero? What is two zero in hex corresponds to one in decimal? Y zero in hex. So the zero is a nibble and Y P E L E, right? No. Oh, uh, no. Okay, maybe maybe not. A nibble is four bits, right? One zero means there's no ones. There's no twos. There's no fours. There's no eights. But the fact that it's one zero means there's a what? A 16 would be one zero. So two zero is like 30, 33. Yeah, 32. 32. Darn right. Each of those four bits gets a hex character, gets zero through nine or eight through F. I feel like it's saying it's as if I've talked about quaternary geology. <laughs> um the landforms uh, excavated by the glaciers, the Pleistocene, um, you know, deposited a, a karst-rich topology. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so please uh, appreciate appreciate your hex, okay? Um, so respect your hex. Here's your hex, okay? Um, so you have percent two o. It will be a thirty-two. 
And so it looks up what it is based on, okay, it's a two and then it's a zero after the percent sign. And it turns it into 16 times the high nibble plus the, the low nibble. Okay. Um, <laughs> take it from an old man. Um, and, and then you go on to the next thing here. So this is performing CGI decoding. The point is we have a, if you take code, I don't care what the code does, you can describe it as a flow graph. And then you can, we can reason about things that will test this flow graph that will, for example, reach all state, all these basic blocks in this flow graph or go every path, every transition in the flow graph will be reached. Those are two different things. Hmm? We'll come to that. Um, and then we're going to translate into test cases. Same thing can be done here. We could we could realize we could aim at a test strategy that reaches each of these states, or we could do one job better and realize a test strategy that goes down each of these transitions. Mm -hmm. Those are gonna be different. Which of those is stronger? If I said, hey, um, I conducted testing of this. I have a set of test cases and they reach all of these states, the kind of things and these these um, uh, these uh, sort of rounded rectangles. Or I said, I did testing of this and I guarantee that I did all the, the individual transitions here. Which of them is stronger? Mm -hmm. transitions. Sorry? Transitions. transitions are stronger. Because by doing the transitions, I'm I'm actually guaranteed to reach all the states. But I do something more than that. A reason about different ways I could get into a state. But I'm just, just, just testing states. All I have to do is find some way to eject the card. And I say, hey, I hit the eject card state. That's good, right? It's better than never testing the eject card, right? But if I test all transitions, I'm, I'm going the extra mile because I'm testing not just that I got it to eject my card, but I got it to eject my card because of an invalid account. I got it to eject the card because my daily amount was exceeded. I got it to eject the card in another case because I had insufficient funds. I got it to, uh, to eject the card because the ATM is out of funds. And I realized that every single of those cases, it performed correctly. Which of those is stronger? The first or the second? Just reaching this or reaching it via every way you could reach it? The second, right? Does that make sense? Okay. If you're getting these core notions, you're going to be pretty well positioned. Okay. So I would say, and this is the terminology we're going to be introducing, and then I expect you to know edge based testing, transition testing, subsume. this node-based testing, meaning it does everything node-based testing demands, but tests more than it. It reaches eject card, but it reaches it through a, a greater diversity repertoire of mechanisms. You got that sense? Okay, keep that notion in mind because we're gonna take it further. It's not just gonna be edge-based testing versus state-based testing or node-based testing. It's going to be prime path versus edge-based testing, for example. Okay. So remember our key steps. We're going to enumerate the things you want to cover. States or transitions or prime paths. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to figure out ways, abstract ways from start to finish that will hit all of those. Hit all the transitions, for example. And then we're going to figure out particular concrete paths that will make us go those those specific paths. So it, yes. Is the word subdue or subsume? Subsume. In fact, it's right on the slide, Juan. Great question. S-U-B-S-U-M-E. Subsumes. Subsumes. Level of, so edge, edge-based testing, 
subsumes state-based testing or node-based testing, okay? So in other words, if you do edge-based testing, I'm guaranteed to have done state-based testing, but generally I'm, I'm doing at least as much of that and generally I'm doing more than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it turns out that that there's mm -hmm. a hierarchy of these things and node coverage is good. You folks, every team I think has provided me with some sort of coverage testing and almost always that's node-based coverage. Test. You reach the states of the system. Maybe it's screens within your system or maybe it's statements within your TypeScript code or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's good. I mean, if we haven't done that, how can we pass the red face test? How can we seriously say we tested our code really thoroughly if we haven't even reached all places in it? After all, there could be a big fat stinking bug at some place in the code. We never even reached it. How can we say we've thoroughly tested it, right? So no coverage, if you can get no coverage, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a lot better than not having it, but we can do better than that. Generally, you can do edge-based coverage, but edge-based coverage is not really as good as you can get. It's good, it's better, generally, than no coverage. It's guaranteed to be at least as good as no coverage, but there's a set of other types of coverage that are at least as good as this. This is what's called the pre-order or a what's that? partially ordered set here. We have a graph where we have th some things that are stronger than others and other things that are kind of incomparable. And, and researchers have mapped out sort of what are different levels of, of uh, testing on a post set like this, a partially ordered set. And I'd say partially ordered because not, uh, you know, if, if we have a fully ordered set, um, say we have two numbers, two real numbers, A and B, right? Either A is greater than B or, or A is less than B or A is equal to B, right? Give me any two numbers, uh, real numbers, and that will be the case. Um, uh, either one is bigger than the other, or vice versa, or the equal. Does that make sense for real numbers? This is not true for this case. Though. Give me something that one thing is greater than another, is, is better than another, or at least as good as another. It's greater than or equal to it, level of test. Give me, give me uh, a pair of these where one thing is the first is greater than or equal to the second. Mm -hmm. Jesse. Yeah, edge coverage is greater than or equal in terms of coverage compared to no. But give me now a pair where neither neither is better than the other. Jesse. Or, or Juan, you have your hand up? Yes. Yeah, maybe um all devs coverage with edge coverage. Yeah, exactly. All defs coverage. This is all definitions coverage, for example, with edge coverage. It turns out um, neither is better than the other. There are some cases which edge coverage will capture, and there are some that all defs will capture. But you'll notice there's one up here called prime path coverage. And that's better than edge coverage. It's also better than edge pair coverage. It's better than complete round trip coverage. All these different types of coverage. We're not going to cover all of them, but I will talk a little bit about prime path coverage because it's pretty straightforward to do. And there have been teams in this very class which have done prime path coverage. And my hat, ladies and gentlemen, remains off. Not only off, doffed to such teams. Okay. Not everyone put that up. Uh, okay. Um, so let's talk about state and node coverage. This is the, the basic, the simplest, and the weakest form of, of coverage. So for this ticketing example, it would say you've gone to each of these states. But what have you missed? What have you, what have you not tested? Okay, so I 
I've been in at least one state where I made a reservation, but in once at least once I tried the state where I canceled it because I didn't pay it. Or another I've I've been to a state where I it got I canceled it deliberately, or another state where it's been used. And I, I went to each of these. So what's been um so that's pretty good. I, I tested each of those states, cancellation, using it, paying it, ticketing it. That's good. Or or here, if I had a graph for my how my retail operation for fixing devices work, I I've reached each, I have the set of paths. I should have emphasized. Remember our remember our rubric here. Remember our rules here. We want to find the set of things we need to cover. What are the set of things here? This one, this one, this one, this one. The, hey, sorry. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then we have to find, remember this set of paths from start to finish that will cover those things. Well, that's what's shown in these black ones. These collectively, these three dark, 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 um, uh, thick paths will cover all these states. You got that? So I'm saying, I want to cover these states in circles. And then step two, so those are the things I want to cover. Step two, how, how am I going to have a set of paths from start to finish so we'll cover them while I've drawn them out? They, they come in and, and collectively, do you agree they cover all those circles? Hmm? Yeah. So from start to finish, these paths. Okay, that's that's great. Here we have other paths from start to finish. We um we we don't need any maintenance. We request it at a maintenance station. They estimate the cost and then we and wait for our acceptance. Um we reject it and we say, sorry, it's not worth it to fix my phone for two hundred dollars. Um I can get a new one for cheaper than that. And we go back to the no maintenance state. That's one path. Another path might request it via phone or web and, and it gets picked up and, and um, uh, we deem it unable to repair or what have you. Um, what are some gaps here? So, so if I do this, where are some testing gaps? Where are some things that someone could say, well, yeah, you tested all the states, but you haven't tested the whole system really thoroughly. What are some gaps here? Yes, Tony. Uh, the transition from pain to uh, um, student pain to yeah. cancel refund. Yeah, like cancel refund, right? Where I, I pay it, but then I cancel it before I, it's ticketed. So I can cancel it. I even tested that that works. It's a pretty significant one, right? I want my refund. And no one's tested that code works to give refunds. That's a, that's a vulnerability in testing, right? Um, there's undeniably a fair bit of tested, but there's some things I haven't tested, those transitions. There's another one I haven't tested, like where I canceled the ticket after it's been issued. Um, this one is before it's been issued. Here it's after it's been issued. Um, Okay, um, and you know this can occur at the at the level of code. Jeffrey said earlier that pointed out that glass box testing is testing parts of a system based on knowledge of the code, and that's exactly right. Then we could perform this at the level of the code. So, if if we do state based testing at the level of code, we're reaching these basic blocks. We're reaching these these blocks that look like these things here. I could test this code by reaching all blocks. I've reached block A, I've reached block B, I've reached block C in my paths from start to finish. Maybe I have a path, give me one path through here, or give me two paths through here from start to finish, from the top to the bottom. The bottom is M here. M is the end of this code. And if you go back and look, it's the M of the code. It's the end of the code block. A is the start. So give me, give me a couple paths from start to finish um, that will cover this code. We're not yet dealing with the test cases, but it will go from the start to the finish of this code. So it's going from A to M. Can you give me 
um, a couple paths that could be one, could be two, that will collectively cover all these blocks. So, Tony, yeah. Uh, a, B, N. A, B, and you notice there's a, as Tony's observing, there's a transition from B here to M. So, A, B, M will be one path. That's right. Um, uh, I, I'm rather fond of ABMs. Um, <laughs> Tony knows the joke. Um, so was Eric. Um, uh, maybe, uh, okay, 394. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, um, yeah. Anyway, okay, ABM, and what's another one? A, B, C, D, F. A, B, C, D. I'm, I'm tracing through the logic. A, B, C, D, F, F okay, yeah. L, L B, B M, okay, good. Are there any we're still missing? And which ones are we still missing? Uh, A, B, C, D, uh, G, H. Okay, L, A, B, C, D, G, H, L, L D, yeah. Oh, sorry. B, yeah. M, okay, good. And uh, are we done? No. no. Okay. Okay. Tony, I'll, I'll I'll let you, you know, finish finish it. Finish the the reach. What else do we still have to reach? Uh, A B. Yeah. Uh, C. Yeah. D. D. G. G. I. I. L. L. Uh, B. B. M. M. Okay. Are we done? One more. One more. Yeah. A B C. E, e, L, 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 and, uh, L, L. No, no, we have to go back to B, right? There's no directly from M, L to M. We have to go back to B, and then we have to go here. Do you get that? So those are a set of paths that would reach all, all of the states, right? Um, all of these states are reached by those by those paths from start to finish collectively, right? Um, uh, is uh, so that's uh, that's good. Um, and it's an interesting question. Uh, were all transitions reached here uh, by those states? So I think in this case, collectively they probably were i'm looking and and i don't see any so i think you actually achieved both state coverage and you achieved uh edge coverage um so so that's very good in general we can achieve state coverage without achieving edge coverage at a code level to bad effect so i would say in this case achieving state coverage does not guarantee that the code is safe. Give me some, so here's some code that I will tell you has a bug in it. Okay, this, this code is a bug. Um, um, what would be a path through here from start to finish that would achieve state coverage? Anyone? I, I didn't label the, the um, the boxes, but you can call them A, B, C if you want. What's a path through here from start to finish that would achieve state coverage? Yes. A, B, C. A, B, C. Good. Would this achieve edge coverage? No. No. Because which edge is being missed here? A, C. A, C. There is a possibility the if will be false. The conditional on the if will be false. And it would go to this. And you'll notice that achieving state coverage, I mean, it's, it's some level of coverage, but if you achieve state coverage and you say this code is fully tested, you'd be wrong. Could there still be an error in this code? Yes. And it's not found unless you achieve edge coverage, right? If you achieve state coverage, ABC is sufficient. And will the code work? Okay, well, we we start with p head being null, and then it's we allocate p head 
and with Calic. Remember Calic? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for not making me faint. Um, and and then we assign to P head. But what's the possibility that is only found if we do edge coverage? What's the possibility? Yes, what? You never call color. Yeah, you never call color. You just go, if P head is null, we we don't take the, so false, the, the uh, conditional and if is false. And so we come down to this block C directly from A to C and P head is still null. And then we assign to, you know, we, we deep reference it. We take star P head and try to assign a value there, but it's a null pointer. We get a null pointer exactly, and bad things happen, right? Bus error, seg fault. <laughs> you remember those things? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so here, unless we achieve, we can achieve state coverage, but we won't find this defect. If we achieve edge coverage and we we not only consider we not only cover the edge, uh, the edges of all A to B and B to C, but the edge A to C as well. We will cut. We will catch this error because it would show up when we take the edge A to C. Do you understand that point? Do people understand if I take edge A to C here, that if I some path from start to finish that is A going directly to C, because A makes P head null, and then I assign to it here, bad things will happen. Do you understand that? And our test will be successful in finding that bad things could happen. It will find this bug. Do you understand that point? So this is an example of where state coverage is not enough to root out the bug, but edge coverage is. That's a pretty basic example, right? You agree with that? Pretty common thing to have a condition. If I might say so myself. Here I know the sun, I'll move on. Um, okay. So let's talk about edge coverage. Let's talk about that edge coverage. Um, we're gonna have to go pretty quickly here because time is ticking down. So remember the key steps in the coverage procedure. You wanna Enumerate the things we want we need to cover. Here there can be edges. And then we're going to develop the set of abstract scenarios from top to finish that will cover those things. And then we got a few test cases that will exercise those things. Particular inputs that are going to realize those, those test cases. We're going to return to that point. So here for State coverage, what are the set of things we need to cover? Remember, you can call them A, B, C. Just make sure this is sinking in. What are the set of things we call each of these blocks A, B, and C? What are the set of things we need to cover? A, B, C. If, if we now talk about edge coverage, what are the set of things we have to cover? They're edges, right? And, and give me a description of the edge. You could say, you know, A, C for mean an edge from A to C. So what are the set of uh, edges we need to cover. A, B, B, C, and A, C, right? Those are the set of things we're trying to cover. And we're trying to create tests, you know, uh, we're trying to define flows from the start to the finish that will cover those things. So given one of those paths from start to finish might cover several of these things, that's fine. It's not like we need separate paths from start to finish that are going to cover AB from BC. A given path from start to finish might cover AB and BC. That's fine. But we have to cover all of those, including AC. And that's going to take, in this case, two paths, right? One going through AB and BC. That's, and that'll be one path through here from start to finish for this code. And another one will be from A to C. Hmm? We OK with that? Now, I know this may sound foreign, but I have seen folks in professional software development spend weeks doing edge coverage testing on code. Some of the most gnarly code, they would spend 
a while on that algorithm of trying every single edge has test cases that cover it, at least one test case. A given test case, specific inputs may test several of them, or will in general test many of those edges, but they have to reach all those edges to make sure that they've achieved that coverage in their test case. And it's a serious thing, thing to do. It's a serious devotion of effort, but it gives you great satisfaction because you, you know, more thoroughly tested the code. So here we're going to be testing each transition. Um, and uh, the set of things we reach are, are edges in these flow graphs, right? Many test paths may cover a particular edge. That's fine. It may be reached by many test paths. Yeah. For each path, we have to find, we are eventually have to find a particular situation that will exercise it. Um, okay. Um, so we're going to need to go from something like state coverage, where, as Tony pointed out, we didn't exercise some of these edges to something where we exercise every edge, right? And again, I want to convey that a given path through the system is in general going to hit many such edges. That's fine. And a given edge may be hit by many test cases, many particular paths through the system. That's fine too, as long as we cover collectively all of the things we want to cover. Does that make sense? Are we following? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I don't need to like issue a pop quiz on this right now. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, that's good. Okay. So here we're trying to reach all paths, you know, through this and, and really, um, I should have drawn some, some, um, uh, I could have drawn some uh, of these highlights here. Oh, maybe you heard there was going to be a pop quiz. Um, uh, back here, but uh, here I'm highlighting all the the sort of possibilities that need to be handled. Right now, okay. Um, uh, great. Okay. Um, but when we try to exercise these things. We will be seeking to use, so we're trying to reach all of these points within this code, all of these specific edges. That's what we're trying to reach in our coverage, right? We we identify the set of things we want to cover. That's these ones here and, and these ones flowing down here that I haven't colored. And then we want to figure out paths from start to finish that will reach these things, okay? And Tony enumerated some for us before. A, B, C, D, F, L, B, M. And, and he listed them out with precision, one after the other that collectively covered those. But notice that Tony, I didn't ask Tony in that enumeration to tell me the test cases, the specifics of the test cases that will reach, that will realize those paths will actualize them, will make them happen. And there are test cases, specific test cases that will realize those paths that Tony gave. So I'm gonna pick one of them that Tony enumerated with clarity. With alacrity, not just clarity. A, B, C, D, F, L, B, M was the first one he articulated. Give, can you give me a specific test case that will exercise that path? I'm reminding you, I emphasized before, and I will emphasize again, because alas, this may be the last chance before the final exam review session or to convey the importance of this. A test case needs to specify what? The inputs that are that are required and the results or outputs that are expected right so can you give me a test case that will exercise that particular path enumerated with clarity by tone 
A, B, C, D, F, L, B, M. Can you give me a, a particular input for the string to be decoded? Let me drag this out of the way. So we're looking for the encoded string, a particular string for encoding that is going to exercise this path. What string would make it exercise that particular path through the system? Could you give it to me? Uh, Matthew. A letter A of an input. Or yeah, okay. So let's 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 take the logic. So the string that Matthew proposes, and I admire his his putting this forward. It's excellent. Let's suppose it's a string A. Let's suppose encoded points to the string A. That specific string consisting of a single, single character. And in strings in within C and uh, implicitly, it's not shown, but they end with a what? A, a null character, right? A, a zero. Hmm? Okay, so let's go through. Okay, so we have this encoded points to a string. Here we go. Okay, uh, we got E pointer. Uh, so so we point E pointer to the encoded string, great. And it says, okay, is E pointer pointing to something that's, that's non-null? Yes, it is. True, that goes to C. And then which way does C go? C tests whether that thing, had, the first character in the string, that's this guy here, is plus, is it? No, so it's false. So we go to D. We're playing out Tony's scenario. We're following Tony's vision here. Okay, is it equal to percent sign? No. No. So it goes now to F, just as Tony prognosticated. And here we're going to assign to the output string the letter what? A. Come on. Uh, a, and we're going to advance both pointers. And now E pointer, it'll come back up here and E pointer will now point to the second character in here, which is what? No. And where will it go? What, whither will it go then? It'll go down to M. And we have realized Tony's test case. We have, we have put forward a test case that will realize Tony's first scenario. You get that point. Now, Tony had another scenario that involved, and I can't remember what a second was, A, B, C, D, G, I think, right? And what would we need to do for that one? Would we formulate a, a string that would do that? It would need to have a percent sign as its first character, right? Because we need it to come down here. It doesn't have a plus. That's why it's false. It has percent, so it's going to go here, right? And you can follow it through. So I think what you're probably starting to realize, perhaps with delight or perhaps with horror, is the fact that each of these test cases that Tony enumerated with alacrity um, is realized by a specific input, right? And in fact, we could formulate here a, a set of different test cases that collectively would exercise all the edge coverage through this. So they might be like these ones up here, um, that collectively they will reach all these edges. Or it could be this set here. Each of these is separate by comma. So if we give it this one, and then we give it this one as another test case, and this one is another, we are guaranteed to transition along each of these edges. All right? You get that point? Do you, you, you see that? Okay, so when we have our prescription here for what we want to cover, um, you know, we identify a set of things we want to cover. Maybe there are states, right? Those basic blocks here. Maybe there's screens here for you on. Or maybe we want to do transitions. Maybe it's transitions between those screens of your UI or transitions between those blocks in your diagram. Um, whatever it is, we, we, oh, we, we identify those that we want to cover. Then we have these abstract scenarios like Tony 
led us on, where he mentioned each of them. And then we have to figure out concrete test cases that will make it go those ways of those paths of the Sorktoni enumerated. We have to come up with specific inputs that will steer it in the right way to realize that path. Yes, Matthew. So when we're coming for concrete test cases, yeah. it gives a better practice to define a different test case for mm. each path. Because for example, right. with the coding, yeah. we could define two test cases that would test all the paths. Correct. Correct. We could cover um two test, we could have two test cases that would be reaching all of those those paths. Yes, that's quite right. Um I uh, in general, it's gonna be probably more robust. And and I say this probably because I don't know that that theory has been formulated on this. But um, I think I could, given a few minutes, make a cogent case for the fact that if you have separate test cases for different of these paths, you're probably going to have a diversified portfolio where you're going to be testing um, it with more particulars, right? Um, now, it's going to be, it, in general, it's not going to be feasible for, for you to have separate test cases, a different input that will reach separately each of the things you want to cover. A, a given test case will typically reach many parts of this code, right? It will reach many transitions. But as far as reaching those paths, it could be good to be clear and for the motivation for the test case um, to give it clear goals to say, this is the test, this path. This is the test, this other path. It kind of makes it clear, and it also has a diversified repertoire in terms of testing it more thoroughly, I think. Maybe not at the level of reaching more areas, but the sense of having more different types of data in it, which might show some, some, um, some different results. Now, our time is running thin here, and I, I just want to, um, I'm going to have to uh, abbreviate my comments here. And, and point you to a video that will teach you about content. Um, but I just want to remind us that we're dealing with this subsumption hierarchy, that um, we are dealing with a hierarchy where we can achieve greater levels of coverage by being conscious about what we choose to cover, by going from state or node coverage to edge coverage, we achieved greater, we exercised our program more thoroughly, at least as thoroughly and in general more thoroughly. There are some cases where they may be the same, but by and large, we're exercising it more thoroughly going up here, and certainly at least as thoroughly. And as we go up, it's, it's successfully more thoroughly. Prime path coverage is actually a quite realizable level of coverage. It involves these in about what are called the prime paths of the program. These are elements of the flow that, that meet some formal criteria. And if you can achieve prime path coverage, um, you're doing very, very well. You're achieving kind of a breakthrough level of testing that is better than doing all pairs of edges, better than doing all uses or all deaths coverage or, or think about round trip coverage. It's a level of coverage that is both fairly easy to work through what it would take for your code or your graph of user, your user input, your user interface. But at the same time, has a certain level of strength to it. It is not as strong as complete path coverage, but I want you to tell me, it's one of the final things that um, you'll be answering as a question um, before presenting your, your uh, projects. In general, can we truly test all possible paths of our program? Generally, no, why not? Give me, give me something where testing all possible paths would be almost impossible or downright impossible. 
Anyone here? Was anyone at 332? Yeah. What were you building at 332? Were you building a website? Were you building a compiler? Or were you building operating. an operating system? Could you test all possible paths through the code of an operating system? In general, no. I mean, like a server, an, an operating system shell, you know, it should be able to run indefinitely long, right? Um, the idea that you could test all possible paths through it, have have guaranteed test cases that test all possible paths once once through the loop, twice through the loop, three times through the loop, four times, and you know, at infinitum is is implausible, but Prime path coverage is a level of testing that's at once readily definable, achievable, and more powerful by a, by a significant margin than several other types of testing. And I will ask you to review a video about prime path coverage, and I'll be sure to talk about it in our final exam review session. Okay? And with those words, ladies and gentlemen, I wrap up uh, our last lecture together. And I turn to a new phase, the final phase, where on Thursday, I look forward to hearing, hopefully with some stakeholders, about your final project. Okay? Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.